From robots that can navigate through hundreds of shelves in an 11 meter tall warehouse. So then the robot management system will trigger the relevant robot to go and retrieve the beam or the rack. To a sleek and savvy B2B app that complements a 24 million US dollar futuristic factory. So on the second floor is where we do our retrieving. The meat will be all in a crate. As we take out the crates, we will come out to use the scanner to scan each crate. Singapore companies are turning to digital tools to forge their future. Basically, the, the pigs are already slaughtered, uh, be it in Australia or, in, or from Indonesia. We will store them into our chiller, and after that, we will debone the pig. This is basically the pork side. Basically, pork side is just half a side of a, a, a pig. Uh. Roughly, we are doing about 300 to 340 sites a day. Tionglian is a pork distributor. The family-run outfit dates back to 1974. Second-generation owner Benson Teo runs the company with his sons Larry and Kelvin. The company is started by my late granddad. When it started, it was a very small factory space. Then we got about, about just three delivery trucks at that time. And then at that time, you know, we were doing uh, uh, more, more than just pork. I understand we were doing a bit of poultry and seafood as well. And then my late granddad, he passed away during 1991. He handed the business to my uncle and my dad. So since then, they took over the business and they grew the business. After four decades, Tionglian moved its operations into the smart factory in 2020. Approximately 10 million US dollars went into outfitting the production line with a sensor-equipped conveyor belt and automated storage systems. With these, Tionglian can process up to 21,000 kilograms of pork daily. Today, the company is one of the leading pork distributors in Singapore. I think we see that the business for this food, the market is there, a smart factory. I think we see a long trend in future, manpower is the biggest issue. We have really designed a good factory, everything will be under conveyor. I think it's much faster. Larry heads administration and sales. <laughs> While brother Kelvin manages the production floor. This section is our deboning section where we debone our meats for the rest of the processing uh, departments. Most of the butchers came from uh, the old factory. So basically, each table, each station, right, have a fixed job of what they're supposed to do. The one at the far end, right, will split the pork side into three. Then uh, as it goes down the line, uh, they have the deboners and they have the trimmers here as well. It used to take six people an hour to cut and process 40 sides of pork. With the new automated system, they can now do 50 to 60 sides within the same amount of time. For the machineries we have at our first floor and second floor, there has a few purpose of our processing. We have uh, a few cutting machines that are to cut into slices and cut into cubes. And then our packaging, we go with different sorts of clear wrap packaging. Tionglian's customers range from wet markets and restaurants to supermarkets and wholesalers. The company receives up to 300 orders in a single day. We serve a wide range of customers. We supply to the local wet market stores, the food service like uh, the restaurants, hotels, and also the local supermarkets. For our supermarket, it makes up about 30 to 40 percent of our sales. We also uh, supply to to wholesaler, also 30 percent because for wholesaler, you know, they buy in uh, big bulk, so that take up a large portion of our sales as well. Yeah. When it comes to bulk orders from supermarket chains. Tionglian has to log into their procurement systems to facilitate the orders. But for restaurants and wet markets, the company is still receiving requests via phone and email. This is order by wet market. Ah, order by wet market. This is I This warehouse covers 750,000 square feet. A section of this space has been converted into a three-storey mezzanine structure 
housing robots with the capacity to process 20,000 units of products in a single eight-hour shift. So in simple terms, YCH, what we stand for is supply chain solutioning, end-to-end -end supply chain solutioning. And that means uh, not just making sure it gets from warehouse to the store, it is looking at the entire value chain. A supply chain solution starts with the supplier furnishing raw materials to a manufacturer and ends with the delivery of the finished product or service to the consumer. We're looking at the materials, we're looking at the manufacturing process, we're looking at the transportation, the regional connectivity, embargoes, licensing restrictions. YCH was founded in 1955. YCH actually stands for Yep, Tree Those are the initials of uh, my late grandfather. He started the business in passenger transportation. Back then, we were serving the likes of the, the British Army, their private contractors, the PUB contractors, because uh, that was a time before Singapore had, had SBAS and SMRT, obviously. And uh, that was doing fine in the 50s and 60s, roaring trade, because uh, that's what Singapore needed at the time. Chairman and Ryan's father, Robert Yap, took the helm in 1980. He refocused YCH from moving people to moving goods. And that was a very visionary move at the time because the clarion call for my father, uh, for the our chairman, was simply you have 3% revenue left, right? But you have 100% of the headcount, you cannot fire any one of them, they are your family, take care of them. So, so when you're faced with those kinds of scenarios, you have to innovate to survive. Innovation has kept YCH moving forward. In 2020, retail e-commerce sales worldwide amounted to 4.28 trillion US dollars. As the head of growth and innovation, Ryan had already predicted certain trends years back. Even before the pandemic, right? Uh, we, we, you, there was a rising trend of e-commerce. Different kind of fulfillment models which are smaller rather than the typical, oh, you must have one truckload, or you must have one pallet, then I ship to you. Right? Those kind of things don't happen anymore. Just look at our food delivery. One, one cup of bubble tea, they still send it to you. Right? And so instead of delivery vans, it's delivery motorcycles, scooters, bicycles. They want to have lower minimum orders. They want to have faster fulfillment times. In order to prepare for this increase in demand, Ryan decided that he needed to expand his operations literally. What we have to do in Singapore is we have to think smarter because we don't have that land, we don't have that land availability, we don't have that labour availability, especially now in these COVID times. So there is definitely a need to have that space maximisation of the mezzanine structure. But the space expansion wasn't the biggest innovation. Ryan decided to bring in a tech gizmo that could increase productivity by 300%. You save time because the robots will move faster than human beings. So for us, it's, it's a matter of the efficiency and the scalability and plasticity of time. Park distributor Tionglen turned its factory smart in 2020. To cater to the increase in orders, the outfit was equipped with an Auto Storage Retrieval System, or ASRS. This cost a cool 2.5 million US dollars. It's actually one of the largest uh, investment in this building. We can hold roughly around 2,700 crates inside. This is the infit point of the mini SRS. So at first floor, after things are being deboned, right, everything will go through this location. We will be able to calculate the total quantity of what was deboned in their weight and also the number of pieces of meat. The crates that go into the system are also logged digitally by the production staff, removing the need for handwritten sticker labels. So on the second floor is where we do our retrieving. The meat will be all in a crate. As we take the crates out, we will come out to use the scanner. And then this is a computer software that helps us to find out how many items uh, we have currently now inside. So I can search on how many bellies I have. It will tell me how many kg, how many uh, pieces, and how many crates are there. This is the software that is used for the shop floor guys to find out the inventory. Aside from the ASRS system, the factory floor has implemented other tech solutions to support its operations. 
Our conveyors have six lines. Each line is each packaging machine. When we purchase this conveyor, this sensor comes together with it. We told them that we just we don't want just a conveyor that, that just moves the products, a transition. We want to do something that will be able for us to get more data for our production. With this, it will save our data for months. We can back trace like how many packets we packed uh, last month compared with this month, or packet from last week compared with this week. Which is critical, especially in times of festivities, where the market demand for pork can go up by as much as 30%. We know that oh, last year, Chinese New Year, we've done how many? This year, Chinese New Year, we expect to do the, the same number, so we prepare that kind of quantity for... This data will help us to forecast that kind of quantity. YCH, a family-run supply chain solutions provider, is utilising robots to boost its productivity. In 2019, third-generation member Ryan Yap set up a special department to cater to e-commerce orders fulfilled by robots. What's happening here is that we have about 24 robots uh, looking after about 350 racks of shelves. And they're constantly shifting the racks around to bring them to an interaction zone, an operations area. We call it a workstation. The modus operandi here is known as goods to person. So what will happen is that all these uh, racks, shelves that you see, the robots will lift these individual racks, bring them to our operation area, right, uh, where our workers live, uh, really work and operate out of this small enclosed area without having to travel and go into the depths of the warehouse to interact with the cargo. So we measure in terms of productivity increases. And by putting this in, we've actually tripled our manpower productivity because you cut out walking. It actually takes up a lot of time. Uh, about 30, a good 30, 40% of the time is spent traveling. The robots are autonomous mobile robots, or AMRs. They are supplied by Geek Plus. So this is actually our flagship AMR. We call it the P800. This is the robot that we use as the mainstay in our goods-to-person system. So basically, the function of it is to move underneath the mobile racks, lift it up, and then uh, transport the racks to and from different places. But how do the AMRs know which racks to lift? So this area right here, this is actually a camera that reads a QR code underneath the racks. The robot management system software was designed specially for the operations here. So, first of all, our whole software for the system is hosted on our on-premise servers, which are housed in a server room, usually. And uh, the communication with uh, all the terminals and robots are done wirelessly. Wherever there's a task that needs to be assigned to a robot, this information will be communicated wirelessly from the servers to the robot. So, for example, if a certain item needs to be picked, then the system will already know where this item is among all the racks here. So we have our algorithms to assign, for example, the nearest robot to carry out this uh, retrieval task. And then the robot nearest to it will carry the rack and then bring it to one of these uh, picking stations. The robots read the QR codes on the floor to get from point A to B. So what we are seeing here in this terminal screen here is the layout of this uh, current warehouse. So we have um, this little square, blue squares here, which uh, represent the racks, the mobile racks. And then we have this circular icon that represents the robot. You can see they're actually moving, So because right now we are uh, doing operation. And the green squares here are the uh, workstation. And the top right one here is where we are standing at. Right. Then uh, each of these lines, they're actually the path for the robot to take. The e-commerce hub is a busy department. With robots doing the heavy lifting, the team is able to process up to 6,000 orders a day. When people start to buy online, all these orders will come to our WMS system, warehouse management system, where we will start to process the order. We will prioritise the orders according to the um, criteria on the shipping time that is given to us, and we will push the order to the pick and pack operation. And then we will push it to the ground with the robots to process the orders. At the workstation, the staff need only follow the push notifications provided by the system. Okay, we'll start to pick and according to what the system asks us to pick. As you can see here, this diagram shows the racking that is here with all the pigeonhole. So the system will tell us, okay, please go to this red colour, 6C, to get the product. 
and this quantity too. So I will do that now. Okay, first, when we get the product, we will scan. Once I scan the correct product, okay, it, it will tell me which bin to put. I will just have to put the product in and then tap. And then when it turns green, means the order is completed. One bin is one order. After the orders are packed manually, they are ready to be shipped out. In 2020, pork distributor Tionglen moved into a smart factory to boost its productivity. The management team then started looking into their front-facing SOP one year later, designed a B2B app for clients whose data could be synced with the company's back-end systems. One of the main aims was to reduce the risks of human error, especially for big orders. Single transactions easily totaled 700 US dollars each time. A typical restaurant maybe would order both chilled and frozen pork. So maybe they will order a slab of bellies, maybe a, a few kilos of minced pork or a, a few kilos of, of spare ribs. And of course, if the orders need to be processed. Currently, our clerk will need to manually key in all the orders. Sometimes she might see wrongly or even the customer might enter the wrong orders or she might key in the wrong quantity. Then this led to, to sending out the wrong orders. The new app will digitalize the company's workflow from purchase order to delivery. For the app development, we are currently in the uh, testing stage. So it's just some, they're doing some debugging and also to make sure that the app works smoothly. Larry has been working with Dynamics Solutions. They've installed ERP, or Enterprise Resource Planning, a software system that integrates a company's finances, operations, and supply chain. So, okay, basically, this entire chunk here is our back-end process. We can see the finance portion, the account receivable, account payable. We can also take a look at our inventory as well. It will also be reflected in our ERP system. So, how this app comes in is, order will, be, will flow from the app to the, the order processing without any manual keying in. After working on the app for close to a year, the team is making final preparations to go live. Okay, the app is completely developed already. It's almost at the final stage. So we are selecting some of the golden customer or pioneer customers to do a soft run testing. Hey, hi, Chef Steven. How are hey. you? Good. Hey, Steven. Yeah. Chef Steven runs Etc. He's been a regular customer of Tionglian for more than 10 years. Larry and his sales rep are hoping to get the chef to adopt the mobile app. With this app, I think it's good because sometimes when I'm not around, my staff, my colleagues actually can do the ordering also. I just download this app and also can check through the app whether the staff order more or order less. If it's not enough, then I can follow up and order and add on the item. So I think this group is quite helpful. What happens if once customer order through the mobile sales app, details such as the customer name, delivery address, the item, quantity and price will be in the system. So all our cloud need to do is they will just need to print the sales order and send to the order processing department to process the order. Larry hopes to complete the entire customer migration process in under a year. In order to meet an increasing demand for faster fulfillment times in the e-commerce industry, YCH, a supply chain solutions provider, is employing robots in place of humans. After successfully implementing a goods-to-person robotic system on a smaller scale, Ryan Yap, the head of growth and innovations, started dreaming bigger. He has built a new three-story mezzanine to scale up the company's operations even further. In a warehouse, there's a lot of the airspace that's required. So really, the only way to bring that same versatility that you saw at the e-commerce hub and put it into the, the, uh, the warehouse is to come up with an automated messaging structure. Instead of using only the familiar AMRs, a new robot model is being introduced, the C200 series. The conception of the Mezzaline project is so that we can utilize as much vertical space as possible 
So there were a few product range that we were experimenting with, but in the end, we end up with a combination of two product range. Uh, the first one is the P800 AMR, which is our standard AMR unit. We are using it on the ground floor to manage our mobile racks. And then for the second and third mezzanine floor, we are actually using this C200S Robo Shuttle. Slightly different from the AMR. So this robot already comes uh, pre-assembled from our factory. We, we actually manufacture our own robots uh, with our production plant in China. The C200 series executes the bins-to-person workflow. So what bins-to-person means is that instead of carrying the whole rack to the operator, it actually retrieves individual bins to the operator. So in this case, you actually minimize the overall material movement and it's a more precise way of doing material handling. Terence is still in the process of trialling his automated machine. What you see on this screen is actually the layout of uh, this entire setup. Each of the green icon represents each of the tote bin, and then uh, this circular icon represents uh, the robot shuttle robot. We are doing a testing of the tote retrieval and uh, the storage mechanism and function. Similar to the e-commerce hub operations, the robot management software system will manage the movements and pathways of the machines. So notice that there are also QR code. Uh, it will follow the QR code as part of its navigational process. So yes, the speed is fast because it's meant to be worked in a non-human environment. Each of the location here, uh, there is also a QR sticker uh, for each uh, bin location. So actually, this, this is to help with the identification of the positioning of each uh, tote. A total of 58 robots will run the mezzanine in a couple of months. And Ryan hopes that this is just the beginning. I have to put my automations uh, intelligently. I have to invest uh, in a smart manner. Because uh, right now, I think supply chain is at a point where we're front and centre in the limelight. With all these pandemic news, disruptions and shortages, the veracity, the resilience of your supply chain has now come front and centre into everyone's minds. The next 10 years is us putting it together to make a, real, a better difference than what we are now.